So in a way, this, this talk is perhaps the least interesting and least important because you're going to see much more detail and much more wisdom um, on this subject from our experts than I'm able to give you. Um, I've been involved with large-scale biodiversity data capture a couple of times. Um, well, a bunch of times, like the last 20 years. But a couple of large collections where essentially part of my job has been to see to its computerization. But in the ornithology world, large scale is a couple hundred thousand specimens. And you just heard in the botany world or in the insect world, you're talking about millions, okay? So in large part, the zoological uh, data capture challenge as far as macrozoology, which is to say birds and mammals and other vertebrates, a lot of that work is done. And this real challenge of capturing, you know, non-digital biodiversity information, a lot of that challenge, not all of it, but a lot of it is dealing with these, these huge collections of insects and plants, and that ends up being the major challenge. So all that I'm going to do in, in this very brief introduction to the course is give you just a, a quick overview. Um, I had fun looking at this, this special issue of Zoo Keys, which is a, an online journal. And um, it's kind of the title of the, the collection of papers is kind of a joke that our joke of a former president, um, George W. Bush, um, who many of us were a bit disappointed with, um, he started this program, No Child Left Behind and it was supposed to reform primary education in the US. And what it ended up doing was making a mess of things, let's just say. So hopefully this, um, this play on those words, no specimen left behind, hopefully this will be more successful than, than Bush's no child left behind. But essentially, we have a big challenge ahead of us. For example, these are herbaria in the US. Uh, I couldn't find a map of herbaria worldwide. But if you look at this, these largest circles are uh, a million or more specimens. And so you can see a lot of herbaria that meet that criterion sprinkled across the United States. If you look at the two colors, this low, lighter color is herbaria that are not involved in uh, digitization. And if you notice, there are a bunch of dark colored ones, which are to say the, the ones that are involved in databasing, but there are also a large number of light colored ones, which are herbaria that are inactive as far as digitization. So that's the picture in the US. It's a pretty sad picture, to be honest, um, and yet there are points of light. Uh, around the world, the picture is more complex. There are points of light and there are points of, of darkness. Um, there's a lot going on as far as technology. Barcoding, for example, gives us a way, you know, when I began my career, we were writing tags out by hand in India ink on rag paper. And now we have the possibility of capturing an immense amount of information in a machine-readable tag. And in fact, your smartphones can literally read that barcode and come up with all the data that was in that data record. So these are very exciting changes. We have very detailed workflows, and you're going to hear about some of those from our experts. But these workflows are, are essentially tried and true for a given situation. Um, but they really make a difference. And, and in fact, one of the biggest challenges in terms of large-scale biodiversity data capture is just getting the workflow right. Uh, there are some really interesting, innovative, you could call them crazy new ideas. For example, Christiane, I don't know what you think of the, these ideas, but you have a whole tray of insects. And if you go through one by one, 
to capture the image of that label, it's going to take a long time. And so there are people experimenting with extremely detailed images of the whole tray. And if you look at this, for example, in this case, you can get all the data out of that photograph. And then here with larger insects, you've got some missing pieces, like I can't see the year here, right? But that's a very, very interesting idea because it might reduce the time required to get that image a hundredfold. That's very, very interesting. Um, so there are, some, there are some really amazing opportunities available to us now that even five or 10 years weren't available. And so the, the question is, if 90% of biodiversity information or 80% of biodiversity information is not currently digital and accessible, can we change that quickly? Can you change that quickly? Okay, that's the, that's the question, that's the challenge that we're putting out in this course. So, I kind of made a list of what would be my goals in this field. Essentially, in the biggest picture, if you capture the knowledge you have already, if you capture that information in a way that is now usable, accessible, you can take huge advantage of the knowledge that's already existing. Um, you can avoid this, this terrible phenomenon that I call garbage in, garbage out, which is to say when you have bad data at the beginning, you get bad results at the end of your analysis. And if you read the literature in biodiversity science, you see a lot of garbage coming in, sorry, coming out, that's a result of a lot of garbage going in. Incomplete data, dirty data, right, data full of, of errors. If we capture all of that information that exists, well, we can do a lot of analyses now. That doesn't mean we don't want to go out into the field and get new information. It just means that we can take full advantage of what we already allegedly know. Um, we can also have information for areas that maybe we can't work in. Uh, many of the places where I did my dissertation research are now not accessible in, in Mexico. And so by capturing that information, we can work in areas where we can't work, okay? Um, and perhaps most important, we can guide efforts to complete the information. Once you know what you know, then you can best design the most cost-effective and the most efficient strategies for finishing what you don't know. So essentially what we're aiming in the very biggest picture is to build on present knowledge, existing knowledge, instead of replacing it. Okay? Um, so essentially what we're setting out to do in this course is to give you the concepts, the methods, practice in biodiversity data capture. The way we selected your applications from amongst a hundred or so is that you're the people who mentioned biodiversity data capture in the sense of accessing this broader resource of existing data that are not digital. A lot of people were very interested in biodiversity data, but in the sense of I can go out and get new data. And so this, this course is very focused on retrospective data capture. And that's how we chose you all, because that was the focus of, of the challenge. New data, that's a whole different challenge. But existing data that are just not digital or not accessible, that's a big challenge. So we're talking about efficient data capture from existing specimens. We're talking about preserving the full original information content without any loss. Talking about taking fullest advantage of technology to make this more feasible. But we're also talking about doing rather than just talking. 
One of my biggest frustrations in the biodiversity informatics world is that I see a lot of people talking. And some of those people who spend a lot of time talking aren't doing. And I have no patience for that. So that's the big focus, getting started. Okay, um, and again, a lot of the richness of a course like this is getting you guys talking amongst yourselves, getting you guys talking with our instructors, but getting a lot of interchange and sharing the co content of this course globally, okay? So here are your experts, you've already met them. Um, Apologies, ladies, I didn't have good photographs of you, so I got what was on, on the internet. Uh, John, I couldn't resist that one. <laughs> uh, you have four of the experts from around the world who really have been doing this stuff, have been making it happen. And that's why I focused in on inviting them to, to give this course. Um, We've got a lot planned. This is the longest course we will have given. All of our previous courses have been four or five days in length, and this one is going to be eight days in length, okay? So you guys need to get a lot of rest each night, be ready to roll every morning at 9 a.m. Um, because again, we have a lot to do. We're right here in the list right now. Each different color that you see is a different one of us talking. So I'm going to talk most of the morning. Cristiani, are you up to a talk or a little bit later? No, rather now than later. Tonight. Yes. <laughs> so if you see Cristiani asleep, just like, you know, put a little pillow under her head or something, because she got here at 5 in the morning. <laughs> then John will be talking about um, biodiversity data standards. And then in the afternoon, we've got some explorations for you. In general, we'll give you lecture in the first part of the day and hands-on stuff in the second part of the day. Second day, you can see more purple. So that's John again. We have Melissa in red, Christiane in turquoise. But essentially, we're gonna then talk about very general considerations in data capture, essentially strategies. Third day, keep going, okay? More considerations, we're gonna start talking about some more technological parts. Fourth day, then we start very specifically. Remember the different taxa that people are interested in around the room. A lot of plant people, some insect people, a few vertebrate people, but I mean, all of us are vertebrates obviously, but but the challenges are very different in dealing with, with how do you get the information out. You know, plants are very nice because most plant specimens are big and they're two-dimensional, right? That's really great. Well, I work with these terrible things that are round, fragile, and they have tags, that, it, it, labels that have data on both sides, so it's a mess. Christiane works in an even worse world where you have these things that are tiny, three-dimensional and fragile, and they'll have these microscopic tags. I couldn't be an entomologist just because I can't read their tags. Um, so we're gonna talk a lot about um, strategies for data capture from different types of specimens. Day five, we get very, very into the technology of capturing digital images. This is Kim talking. Day six, we start into, okay, once you've captured the data, then what do you do? So John's gonna give us a whole day on georeferencing. Then we take Sunday off so that you guys are awake and energetic on Monday and Tuesday. By Monday, we're talking about data cleaning. And then by Tuesday, we'll, we'll back up a bit and we'll talk again about generalities. We'll talk about publishing data. 
we'll talk about how important sharing, publishing data is to science. And we'll talk about some of the details of, of what does it take to share data? Um, what are the politics? What are the practicalities? And then at the very end, we're going to ask you for your input because you know, th these courses, you know, I've never run a course on data capture before. As I said, I'm not even really an expert in the field. I've got the experts here. But we're going to be doing more courses in the future, and we need your input. So during the course of this week and a half, think about how can we do this better, either for a different theme or other themes that, um, that we've already covered, but help us to do this better. So then just a few practicalities. Um, there's Felina and me, but we basically are, are at your service as far as making this work. Um, that's my granddaughter, Kalesi. Um, I don't think she was, you know, like unbathed. I think that was a, something that somebody had put on her cheek. Um, but anyhow, Felina and I are at your service as far as solving problems. If you have any needs as far as, you know, being comfortable here in the hotel, uh, if you have any dietary restrictions, please let us know and we'll make arrangements with the, the people in the hotel. Uh, but whatever you need, just let us know and we'll do our very best. In general, the course plan will be like this. See if, if you're coming from here in Accra, try to be here at 8.30 or well in advance of 9. If you're staying here in the hotel, try to have breakfast around 8 so that by 9 a.m. sharp, we can get started with the lectures. We'll go an hour and a half, and then we'll take a break. We'll go an hour and a half, an hour and a quarter again, and we'll take a break for lunch. Hour and a half, and then an hour and a quarter. Okay. Um, it's very easy to let the breaks go longer than you had thought. So please, you know, keep an eye on it and please be back here right on time, because otherwise we're going to be terribly behind by the end of this, okay? We're going to be rushing some lectures. We don't want to do that. It just makes the course less effective. So again, if you can, come back from breaks and lunch and such uh, on the early side, okay? Any questions about this course? <laughs> 